Life in all its forms and variety is not equally distributed across the planet. In between the last still ice-covered Himalayan ranges in Nepal and heavily populated Bangladesh lies one of the world's great hotspots of biological diversity. Here, landlocked, nearly inaccessible due to the difficult terrain, in one of the most remote regions of India, Meghalaya, are the Garo Hills. With species richness equal to the densest tropical rainforests, this area is one of the most species diverse of all terrestrial ecosystems. And one of the last refuges of the Bengal tiger, the Asian elephant, the Huluk gibbon, and the great one-horned rhino all equally threatened with the potential of disappearing forever from the earth. And these are only the highly visible charismatic species recorded by science. Much more could be lost. The amazing biological diversity found here has survived in a number of pockets until now. But for many species endemic to western India, the Garo Hills could be where they make their last stand. Is there time remaining to save these unique species? Do we understand well enough what needs to be done in order to protect them and how to halt the loss of future species? One of the last species to arrive here was the human being. With its ability to make tools and manufacture consensus through language, this species originally developed an agrarian society. And it did this through clearing the forest by fire. Juming, the local name in the Garo language for shifting cultivation, enabled the development of small-scale farming, sustaining livelihoods at a subsistence level. In the past, the juming cycle of slashing and burning the forest to make fields took at least 25 years. But as populations have increased, the natural regeneration cycle for soil and mature forest has been drastically reduced. And now some farmed land only rests for three years. Over large areas, this has converted a mixed tropical forest into a degraded grassland with low agricultural productivity. The extraction of non-renewable coal reserves for industrial and urban development has further fragmented the landscape, putting additional stress on a once abundant commodity, water. While I was a child, we used Samsung River. Very clean. Now, a lot of polluted. You can not you got to take bath as well. There. A lot of pollution because of coal dust is there. Teaching the eye how to see helps us read landscapes correctly. We can see that farming on steep hills reduces the vegetation, the infiltration, and the retention of rainwater. Clear cuts of thick, pristine forest leave a fragmented landscape without the comforting canopy. Small footpaths and elephant travel lanes are often the only means of entering thick, intact forest interiors. Sel Belgari is one of seven Garo Hills forest villages that participates in a holistic community forest restoration program led by the Wildlife Trust of India, helping to restore continuity to the animal habitat. So you see a mosaic of forest and jungle land, secondary forest. So we started working with the community and seeing, sensitizing them so that this is set aside land for conservation. And in the process, about more than 12,500 odd hectares of land has been set aside for conservation and has been notified with the Garo Council as villages of forest. We are trying to see that the large area can come into under conservation and also providing protection and at the same time the degraded 
areas how do we restore that information agar sandalwood gamari teta champa jamun an arsenal of indigenous tree species are standing in line ready for active reforestation a major challenge to see how do we get all of them working together how does all the efforts of all these people can be gelled into one that's one of the major challenge the second major challenge is educating people because what we feel is many of the places the damage is happening because of lack of education uh, sensitization so we're trying to see how do we create awareness in the people and that's the second major challenge and the third is zooming and we need to figure out how do we uh, reduce dependence in terms of zooming and explore other uh, sources of livelihood it is only through active conservation and restoration that topsoil remains anchored where it is and the hydrological cycles remain functional for entire watersheds. Water infiltrates in the ground, filters through the geologic soils, creating the essential element for all well-being. But the benefits go beyond the maintenance of agricultural productivity and pure water. New habitat for space-loving megafauna also opens the opportunity for ecologically sensitive forms of tourism in the restored region. India, with its fast-growing middle class in the millions, has a large enough domestic market for this newly developing sector. But it is also the middle class wish for petrol propelled mobility that is one of the greatest threats to linking fragmented areas of the ecosystems. Ecosystems which developed in equilibrium over millions of years are heartlessly cut by roadways, making it difficult for an elephant to reach his bedroom, his kitchen, or his mate. Will the traditional godlike admiration of the elephant and newly posted yellow signs make people slow down? Or is enforcement needed to negotiate between the horsepower of the cars and the needs of the elephants? Animal rescue centers help reintroduce those animals that have been affected by human impacts into their natural environment and create useful and needed jobs for humans. A biologically diverse ecosystem is more resilient to disturbances since it contains many species with overlapping functions that are able to yes. substitute for each other. The more interconnected linkages exist, the more stable and resilient the system will be. The Garo Hills, with its wonderful and unique diversity, is helping to teach us about the need for conservation and protection of nature and the potential of restoration.